ازيكم يا شباب يا رب تكونوا بخير آه هنكمل مع بعض في السلسلة بتاعة المايكرو بروسيسور وزي ما احنا متعودين بنقول سريعا كده الأجزاء اللي فاتت وندخل في الجزء الجديد تمام طيب احنا اتكلمنا في ايه في الفيديو اللي فات اتكلمنا عن الحاجات دي هنبتدي نعرضها بس سريعا اتكلمنا عن المايكرو كمبيوتر ديزاين اتكلمنا يعني ايه سنترال بروسيسور يونت يعني ايه السي بي يو يعني ايه الاي ام يو يعني ايه ان احنا نعمل اوبريشن سواء كانت الاوبريشن لوجيكال او اوتوماتيك وقلنا ان الحاجات دي كلها المسؤول عنها الاي ام يو قلنا الكنترول يونت المسؤول عن التحكم عموما اتكلمنا عن اجزاء مهمه جدا وهي الميموري انواع الميموري الباسز قلنا يعني ايه باس وانواع الباسات قلنا الباس ده عباره عن سلك طب انواع الباسات ايه الفرق بين الداتا باس والانبوت اوت باس الكنترول باس الادريس باس الحاجات دي كلها معروف طيب اتكلمنا يعني ايه وان سايكل يعني ايه كلوك سايكل يعني ايه الحاجات دي كلها والتعريفات العلميه بتاعتها وشرحناها بالتفصيل طيب حاجه مهمه جدا بقى الانستراكشن اكسكيوشن سايكل قلنا من اول احنا عندنا البرنامج بيكتب بالهاي ليفل لانجويج لغه الانسان اللغه اللي احنا بنكتبها وبتنفذ بلغه الكمبيوتر الاسوار والوحايد لان هو الكمبيوتر زي ما احنا قلنا حته حديده مش بيفهم غير الاسوار والوحايد فبالتالي ان احنا عشان نحول من الهاي ليفل لانجويج لو ليفل لانجويج قلنا هنحول عن طريق ايه فالاكسكيوشن سايكل اصلا اللي بتمر بتبقى عباره عن ايه من اول ما احنا بنفتش الحاجه نعمل ديكود نعمل اكسكيوت الكلام ده كله لازم تبقى عارف المصطلحات العلميه اللي احنا اتكلمنا عليها يبقى تبقى عارف يعني ايه فتش يعني ايه ديكود يعني ايه اكسكيوت وتبقى عارف ان دي عباره عن انستراكشن اكسكيوشن سايكل في حاجه كده لحد دلوقتي اظن الدنيا كده واضحه اتكلمنا طيب عن الميموريز وقلنا يعني ايه ميموري وبنتكلم دلوقتي عن الكاش ميموري او فيرتشوال ميموري هنبتدي بس نبص على فيديو بسيط كده هي هو لذيذ لذيذ الجزء دوت اللي هو سيجمنت وبيجت وايه فيرتشوال ميموري انا عايزاك تبص عليه كده معايا in the middle is the computer's physical memory the ram This contains any programs and data that are currently in use. On the right is a swap file on the computer's hard drive. Each program that's currently running might be a procedure or a function. A running instance of a program is called a process. Needless to say, the operating system itself has a number of processes in memory when the computer is working. Suppose the user starts launching applications. Sooner or later, the memory is going to fill up. Notice how different processes occupy different amounts of memory. These portions of memory are known as segments. They're based simply on the sizes of the programs. For each process, the operating system knows its starting location and how big it is, so it knows where everything is. When a request is made to launch some more software, perhaps a word processing application something has to move out of memory to make room for it if one of the processes belonging to the presentation software is currently doing nothing the operating system might decide to move it to disk temporarily at least so the word processing programs can begin when another request is made perhaps to launch a web browser this time another idle process of at least equal size has to be moved out of memory to make way in order for the spreadsheet process in the swap file to start running again something else of at least equal size has to be swapped out although there is enough free space to allow for this the free space is fragmented in a segmented memory management system each process is atomic it can't be split up it's all or nothing so the spreadsheet process is going to have to wait the chances of the large presentation process getting back into memory are now particularly low because a number of adjacent processes will have to become idle before this can happen in summary in a segmented memory management system segments are swapped between disk and the main memory as needed Program segments correspond to blocks of program code such as procedures or functions. Data segments correspond to data structures such as stacks, queues or graphs. 
each segments vary in size. The operating system knows the start and size of each segment in physical memory. Each segment is atomic. Either the whole segment is in RAM or none of the segment is in RAM. A segment in memory can only be replaced by a segment of the same size or smaller. Segmentation can result in memory fragmentation, a lot of small segments with gaps in between. Large segments may not be allowed into the memory very often at all. Segments can be pushed together to limit the amount of fragmentation and allow large segments to be loaded more often. With paged memory, as far as any one program is concerned, it has the whole memory to itself, which of course is not true. But the operating system allows the program to behave as if this is the case. A program's view of the memory is called logical memory. In reality, each program is broken up into a number of equal sized pages. Each page is only four kilobytes in size, so a single page might contain a single program, more than one program, or just part of a program. These pages could be anywhere in physical memory that the operating system decides to put them. Indeed, some pages may be on secondary storage. To make this possible, the operating system maintains a page table with information about which logical locations map to which physical locations. As far as any one program is concerned, the memory is a quiet place. Here's the word processor's view of the memory if it is also running. And here's what the spreadsheet application thinks is going on. The reality of physical memory is, of course, somewhat more complicated. When yet another program, or indeed data, wants to access the memory, it may well be loaded in a fragmented state. If there isn't enough space, some of the other pages will be moved to disk. This is called paging out. When a program on disk is required again, it will be paged back in. Supplementing the RAM with secondary storage like this is called virtual memory. In a busy system, when the memory is almost full, there can be so much paging activity that the computer becomes unusably slow. This is called disk threshing or disk thrashing. In summary, with paged memory, the memory is split up into small, equal-sized sections called pages or page frames. A single application might occupy multiple pages, which aren't necessarily contiguous. Each application program has its own view of the memory. This is called logical memory. A page table records where the different pages of a program are located in physical memory. Unused pages may be paged out to a swap file on disk to make room for others. And these pages are paged back in when they're needed again. Supplementing physical memory with secondary storage is known as virtual memory. When memory is low, excessive swapping can lead to disk threshing, and this can degrade performance. So what's better, segmentation or paged memory? Segmented memory makes an entire block of code available to the processor, which allows for fast access. Segmentation, on the other hand, can lead to fragmentation of free space. With segmented memory, large processors might not get access to the memory very often. Paged memory, on the other hand, can lead to fragmented processors, which will run more slowly. However, paged memory makes better use of free space. Windows uses paged memory. Segmented memory is not as common. Some processors support a hybrid of paged and segmented memory management in which each segment consists of several fixed size blocks. The best of both worlds. Monsieur? Segmented memory.
ده بصراحه كان شرح المعنى ده بشكل كويس احنا ممكن كنا شارحين طبعا الكاش ميموري وشارحين الفيش وشارحين الحاجات دي كلها بس الفيديو دوت بالفلو تشارز دوت وضحها لكم اكتر يعني ماشي طيب فالكلام ده كله الموضوع بالنسبه لكم تمام قلنا هاو ذا بروجرام ران خلاص قلنا الاكسكيوشن بيحصل ازاي طبعا اخدتوا ماده كامله اسمها اوبريتنج سيستم وراجعنا عليها في الاول بس لحد دلوقتي كده اعتقد الاجزاء بالنسبه لكم واضحه جدا ماشي ودي شكل كويس يوضح برضو ازاي بيحصل الاكسكيوشن بتاع البروجرام طيب مالتي تاسكينج نيجي بقى لحته المالتي تاسكينج يعني ايه مالتي تاسكينج اوبريتنج سيستم يعني انا عندي اوبريتنج سيستم يقدر يعمل اكتر من بروسيس في نفس الوقت طب باشمهندسه هو دلوقتي انا هحدد ازاي انهي بروسيس هيحصل لها اكسكيوشن الاول وانهي بروسيس هيحصل لها اكسكيوشن الاخر زي ما قلنا يا جماعه في الجزء بتاع الاوبريتنج سيستم زي ما قلنا اكتر من مره ان انت عندك كذا تكنيك بيحدد سواء كان فيرست انبوت فيرست اوتبوت لاست انبوت فيرست اوتبوت ايا كان التكنيك اللي انت هتمشي بيه في اكتر من حاجه بتحدد تمام طيب بنقول عندنا ال process has its own memory area and may contain كذا فبالتالي اللي هيحدد مين يدخل الأول ومين يخرج الأول operating system بتاعنا في مشكلة؟ هو انتوا بس طلبتوا ان احنا نمشي على السلايد سلايد سلايد بحيث ان السطور كلها بالنسبة لكم تبقى واضحة فأنا بعمل بس اللي انتوا عايزينه يعني بس اعتقد الكلام كله خلاص واضح يعني ماشي احنا اللي همنا في أسئلة ال MSQ ال multitasking summary ان يعني احنا بنقول ان الاوبريتنج سيستم ران كذا بروجرام مع بعض ات ذا سيم تايم يبقى عندي كذا بروجرام عايزه اعملهم في نفس الوقت عشان كده بيبقى ايه مالتي تاسكينج يعني بيعمل كذا تاسك يعني عارف مثلا لما انت تكون قاعد بترسم وفي نفس الوقت بتشرب شاي وفي نفس الوقت بتكلم اختك الصغيره في نفس الوقت بت بترد على باباك لما يسال سؤال فانت كده ايه مش بيقول لك ايه ده هو انت مالتي تاسكينج هو انت بتعمل كذا حاجه في نفس الوقت فهو بالظبط يعني الكمبيوتر نفس الوضع هو بيعمل سيم بروجرام في نفس الوقت بس الفرق السكادول بتاعهم بقى ماشي ازاي ماشي فزي ما قلنا اهو هو ممكن يبقى عنده كذا تاسك ويقدر يعملهم كلهم في نفس الوقت طيب برضو السيسكو ريسك احنا كنا لخصناها كلها وشرحناها كلها في فيديو كامل لوحدها انت عايز تشوف حاجة برضو توضح لك الفرق بين السيسكو والريسك مفيش مشكلة انتوا بتحبوا يبقى في فيديوهات تفاعلية اكتر فممكن نحط برضو الفيديو ده Common processor designs complex instruction site computing for CISC and reduce instruction site computing for RISC A topic of much historical debate These two designs differ vastly in structure, methods of execution as well as usability In order to understand the differences between CISC and RISC processors We will cover the basics of what a processor is and what it does. A processor, also known as the central processing unit, or CPU for short, is where most of the calculations are processed. A CPU does four primary tasks, fetching, decoding, executing, and write back. The two types of CPU architectures we will be discussing, CISC and RISC, both accomplish primary processor jobs, such as decoding and executing. However, Their approaches to doing so differ. In general, RISC has an assembly language that is designed so that each task is broken down into very simple instructions that are each executed once per clock cycle. CISC executes larger and more complex assembly instructions at a time. RISC instructions are highly efficient, but due to their simplicity, they result in many, many more lines of code, whereas with CISC, one instruction may equate to several RISC instructions. This results in simpler code at the cost of efficiency. These are not the only differences between the two architectures. As stated earlier, CISC architecture contains more complex assembly code, while RISC code is simpler. As such, CISC's minimal code is more programmer-friendly, but RISC tends to be more machine-oriented as the code is longer. Due to the nature of their architectures, CISC requires intricate hardware to compensate for its complex instructions, while RISC emphasizes on software due to the increased length of the code. Since RISC is simple, each line of assembly takes one clock cycle to execute, while CISC assembly lines may take multiple cycles. 
Take, for example, the process of multiplying two numbers together, which requires register loading, multiplying, and storing the resulting operand. A risk processor needs you to list all of these instructions one by one, whereas a CISC processor can use the MULT instruction to do this all at once. RISC-based processors are very common today, especially in mobile devices due to the power efficiency that they offer. However, most laptops use the CISC-based x86 platform since most laptops use Intel processors. Since CISC coding is also more user-friendly, this makes x86 a very prevalent CISC-based design. One interesting fact about the x86 platform is that it uses microcode, a lower-level machine code, to take advantage of some of the efficiencies that the RISC-based designs offer. The use of RISC and CISC processors in industry are dependent on associated costs. Early on, RAM was quite expensive, and utilizing less RAM was preferred. By designing complicated processors, a single line of code could translate to multiple instructions. This reduced the amount of RAM usage. However, multiple clock cycles resulted in heavy power usage. The RISC architecture seemed like a viable solution to this. It used more registers within the CPU and thus reduced the use of RAM. The Spark processor is an example of this early success of the RISC architecture. Until the early 1990s, it seemed as though RISC would become the industry norm. However, CISC processor manufacturers started implementing RISC-like features. Many modern processors today consist of the CISC-RISC hybrid. Yet RISC processors, such as ARM, are still common today. Their simple structure allows them to be diversely integrated and also power efficient, which is of paramount importance to today's mobile technologies. To summarize, the main difference between CISC and RISC architectures are their approaches to coding. CISC assembly language is more complicated than RISC assembly language, while RISC assembly language relies on simplicity. While CISC software is more compressed than RISC, the trade-off is that CISC processors contain more complicated parts to accommodate the complicated assembly language. Today, many computers use CISC or CISC RISC processors, such as x86, as CISC is considered more programmer friendly, while smaller devices, such as phones, use RISC processors to conserve power. Thanks for watching our presentation of CISC versus RISC. Mishi? ماشي يا شباب احنا بس بنحاول كده نعرض كذا حاجة برضو بحيث ان الموضوع ما يبقاش ممل بالنسبة لكم يعني الكلام ده كله احنا كده كده اوريدي متكلمين كيف التفصيل نزل فيه البي دي افات فالدنيا واضحة فيه تمام طيب هنكتفي لحد كده وندخل بقى في البروسيسور اركتكشر السكشن الجاي ان شاء الله شدوا حالكو وربنا معاكو يا رب ولو احتاجتوا اي حاجة في الجزء ده كلموني على طول بعتولي مسج احنا كده كده كل جزء بنعمل لايف عليه بنعرض الأسئلة بتاعته وبنتناقش في الأسئلة بتاعته ماشي فشدوا حيلكم وربنا معاكم واشوفكم السكشن الجاي ان شاء الله